Hey, record loving friends, this is Brian from Tokyo Record Style. I hadn't intended to fire up YouTube today, but it was a special day and I thought I would just go ahead and commemorate it. So I'm firing up YouTube and feeling really good about today. Today happened to be a national holiday in Japan. It was Culture Day, November 3rd. And it was also a big day for Tokyo Record Style because this big roadblock that I've had for a month, two months, maybe three months. I never gave up on this website issue. I worked so hard on it, trying to get my web shop going. I, I want to build a web shop for you guys to ha have some good things to come and, you know, that will improve your record loving life. And um, I've just curated a big list and I've been wanting to get it online for so long and it didn't work. And today after literally like 48 hours on the phone with tech support and very knowledgeable developer friends and just, oh my God, just endless nightmares. I finally got it working today and I'm so, so happy. And it's, um, it's really going to be great because it's kind of a little bit of a, it's not that big of a deal, but it's, I, th I think it's going to lead to some more exciting things. So I'm very excited about that. So that was a big breakthrough today that I wanted to uh, just say, good job, Brian, <laughs> you did it to myself. So I can look back at this day and remember, God, it was so hard, but I pulled it off. Don't give up, you know, never give up. I, I, I never gave up on this. I should have given up on it 20 times, but I didn't give up. But what really was a really special thing that happened today that I just want to touch on, even though I don't really know what I'm going to say, is that today the new and last Beatles song was released, Now and Then, which was, you know, in the vault, uh, a recording that the boys tried to work on back in 94 when Free as a Bird and um, real love came out but they didn't really they couldn't pull John off the piano or the piano out of the out of the mix and they kind of gave up on it I saw George mention in a in a video in an interview one time he was like this song we just can't it's, it's worthy we can't make it work and he just he mentioned about how this song was out there but they just like couldn't get around to doing it and, and Paul said in these interviews leading up today's to leading up to today's release that you know, they didn't have the technology to to work on it like they do now with this whole, you know, separation that this Peter Jackson technology that they've used to isolate, you know, using in artificial intelligence to isolate particular sounds from tracks. And they were able to pull John Lennon's voice out of this piano song called now and then and um it gave them the ability to create a new song and god it was so i was it was really anticipating it everybody was the whole world was all my friends were and you know i got a call this morning what do you think of the new song and and uh i listened to it a dozen times today and i still haven't really taken it all in but um just two hours ago I just caught that there was a, a new video released, a new like official um, music video for the song. It's so intense, it's so moving. And uh, it just shows the, the four of them playing together. It's really emotional, really very cool. But um, the thing that I wanted to kind of think about was that it's kind of a melancholy song now and then and I don't even I haven't even read the lyrics once but it's got this it's got a few like pre-choruses and choruses and it's got it goes from minor to major just like you would expect a Beatles song to do and it's got moments of levity and it's got moments of reflection and it's it's like a you could say that it's like it might be a Beatles song that would be you know, buried somewhere on side, you know, side B and, you know, second or third track, but it, it's really a good song. And the more I listen to it, the more it's growing on me. But the first thing that I noticed when I listened to it was that, um, it sounded great. It sounded like a Beatles song and it sounded like, 
it had Paul's, you know, signature on it as far as like the sonic soundscape of it. It had a very well slick, well produced, well separated, big sound with strings and, you know, everything, clarity and brilliance. And it sounded very, um, you know, top notch. And then the second thing that I noticed is that Paul's not really in the, I don't know, I didn't, I, you hear John coming through real strong on the piano, you hear his voice coming through, you hear the drums on top of the mix, and you know, you hear the just the presence of them, and then I kind of felt like I was, like Paul's just presence among the other members of the band was um, reserved. Even though I think he probably re-recorded John's piano, and I think I heard that he, you know, he re-recorded -re George's guitar, but I didn't, as soon as I heard that guitar, it sounded like George, and it, and it, I mean, it sounded like George's guitar, it, like his actual guitar, what guitar, I'm not really sure, but it just sounded like, you know, I have a ton of George Harrison records, and I love George, and it just sounded so familiar. And um, Ringo, of course, is just, he's just got that feel, you know, and it's just, and I don't know, I was thinking about like how, you know, the end of the, the official end of the Beatles, you know, is Abbey Road. And Abbey Road has got the end, you know. Is it the last last song is her Majesty's She's a pretty nice girl. Someday I'll make her mine. But, it, but before that, it's got. And in the end, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Da -da -dun, da -da -dun, da -dun. It's just like such a poetic, perfect, idyllic ending to the Beatles. And it's, you know, there was the sound engineer. I forget his name, Neil Epinsall or whatever his name is. He he. My friend was mentioning that like there was no hint apparently when they were making Abbey Road that there was, you know, they were going to split up, but you just kind of think that they knew it in their hearts. Like they just saw it, all of them. Maybe they never said it, but they knew it, that it was going to happen and it was just time. And, you know, after Let It Be and maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe it was just sort of this ominous, you know, fate sort of song to write, the end. And, um, and it's kind of a perfect ending to the Beatles, you know, back in 1970 or whatever, whenever it came out. But, you know, the Beatles didn't really have a perfect ending. I mean, we, and, you know, John, I was born in 76, John Lennon shot in 1980. And I mean, I was thinking, you know, I mean, how insane must it have been to live in the time of the Beatles? But even for somebody who wasn't even, you know, barely born, you know, when John Lennon was gone, I mean, I still feel like I'm living in the age of the Beatles. And, um, I mean, I know them like I know any other band that's, you know, from my time or whatever. So I really do feel like, you know, I don't know, it doesn't really feel like the Beatles were in the age of the 60s. It kind of feels like, you know, it's it's spanned the, the entire, you know, 60 years since they've been playing together. But um, another thought that I had was that, you know, it, it, the Beatles have such this, this sad ending and... Free as a Bird and Real Love were like so epic, such epic songs. And they were, they just, they were like quintessential Beatles songs. They sounded so great and they, you know, they were uplifting and I mean, they're both just equally awesome. They're just so great. I love both those songs a lot. And they're, you know, they're so different and they're so, and they're similar too. But in a way they're almost like too perfect of an ending to this kind of unperfect ending that the Beatles had. And um, I was thinking about like how now and then is a bit more of like an honest 
uh, it feels a little bit more like an honest uh, last song of the Beatles, more than, you know, Free as a Bird or Real Love. And, you know, maybe like, maybe the end is like, the song, the end from Abbey Road is the end of that chapter of the Beatles. And, you know, the Free as a Bird and Real Love is the end of the, you know, the George chapter. I don't know. And, uh, now and then is the, you know, it's kind of the, the final honest end of the Beatles. But, um, yeah, amazing song. I got to take it. I got to listen to it a, a bit more so I can get my head around it. I think, you know, a friend of mine said to me today, like when his, his dad was telling me about when Sergeant Pepper came out and about how like they all listened to it and it like, like they didn't know what to do. Like they like blew their mind, and they were they were just like, I mean, can you imagine, like you know, hearing Sergeant Pepper for the first time, like when it came out, and like what do you do the day after you hear Sergeant Pepper? I just like it must have, and maybe they didn't know that it would be like considered one of the you know, all time masterpieces of you know all time, but. um I think now and then we'll we'll come back to it in some time and it'll it'll have a different meaning and you know maybe we'll you know maybe it is the perfect ending I'm not sure but I just wanted to recollect the feelings and that I had while listening to this this day of listening to this song and um yeah, just uh, today's today's record record day. It's not record store day, but it's record day. So I went out and um, I got my just my my music on. Got some photographs and people and listened to music and had my Tokyo Record Style website thing work out. And it was just like a big music day. So I just wanted to stop and acknowledge it. So. Thanks for being here and, um, you know, please do all the things that I always ask you to do. Go check out um, Tokyo Record Style, tokyo.record.style. Go check it out and, um, and, and sign up for the newsletter down at the bottom of the page because I'm getting ready to announce a whole bunch of, of cool things. And um, I didn't order my copy of Now and Then yet, but I'm still debating which I should get the 10 inch copy or the seven inch or the color one or the 12 inch or what'd you get did you get one which one did you get and why did you choose that one i'm kind of like on the fence what to get but um i definitely want that one in heavy rotation so hope you guys liked it hope you guys uh enjoyed this video sorry for just a little bit meandering some musings and thoughts but uh, i'm i'm happy to have you guys along here for the ride leave a comment tell me what you thought of the beatles song tell me how your culture day was and uh record day and uh until next time i'll see you out at the record store good night